Hi, I'm Bob German, Cloud Advocate at Microsoft, and I'm here to share tips and tricks on developing applications for Microsoft Teams. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up for local debugging without the use of an internet tunnel of your Teams tabs, task modules, or configuration pages. This video is a companion to another one, what is NGROC and do I need it to build Teams applications? And I'll have a link to that at the end of this video. If you're watching this one, we'll assume that you're building a tab, a task module, or a configuration page for Microsoft Teams, and that you've chosen to work locally without the use of NGROC. Now, you may have noticed that NGROC is listed as a prerequisite in a lot of Teams development documentation and tutorials. Indeed, it is the darling of Teams developers, but it's not strictly a prerequisite. It provides a tunnel so that requests from the internet can get into your local computer to do things like deliver messages from bots. It also provides HTTPS support with a trusted certificate, and this is required by Teams, and a DNS name, and it makes mobile device testing easier because your app is literally live on the internet when you're using NGROC which is also a little scary to some IT departments, which is why you might not really be able to use it. In the case of tabs, well, the connections to your local web server come from the local Teams client or browser. So even if you use NGROC, you're actually just looping back outside to the internet and right back into your local computer. So the tunnel isn't really necessary. Now, adding Azure Active Directory single sign-on doesn't really change that. It means that your local web server needs to also host a web service, but it's called from the local Teams client. So you really don't need any incoming connection for tabs, task modules, or configuration pages. What you need is the HTTPS support and a DNS-like name because Azure AD single sign-on won't work with just plain local host. It also won't work with the uh, Azure websites.net. You need some other DNS name that you can register into Azure AD. And those are the things that you really need. So let me show you how to set up Azure AD single sign-on locally with no internet tunnel. My example uses a React application that was generated by the Teams toolkit. Um, so your exact tools and process may vary a little bit from this depending on the tools you're using, what operating system, et cetera. So the first step is to set up a local host name for your application. Since this uses Azure Active Directory single sign-on, Azure won't allow you to use local host for that particular case. And also uh, you can't use Azure websites.net incidentally. So you need some kind of a custom name. So I'm just going into my etc slash hosts file and adding this entry to 127.0.0.1, which is the loopback network address. So it's just going to loop back. It's not going to go out over the internet. You could get fancier with this and, and put this into your router's DNS, maybe open your local firewall, maybe use your actual local IP address to set up for mobile device testing and other cross device scenarios. But for now, I'm just going to make 127.0.0.1. I'm going to give it this name, Dev Apps for Teams. So now I have two web servers running, and that's because I'm using the Teams Toolkit generator, which actually generates two applications in the case of SSO. It generates one web server on port 3000 for the tab web page, and another one on port 5000 for the token exchange web service. So this makes life a little bit more complicated because we actually have to terminate both of these SSL connections and we're going to have to have a cross origin call. So let's take a look at that. To start, I'm just going to go to my local address or my new local name, devappsforteams.local colon 3000 and verify that I have a trusted SSL connection. And you can see here that indeed this is secure. And this is step two is to enable HTTPS with a trusted certificate. See, it says it's valid, issued by a trusted authority. Now, there's an accompanying article that will lead you through this setup step by step. It's different for each operating system, but you can generate your own certificate and then 
tell your system to trust it. And that's the approach here. And you can see that that is set up and working here. Okay, so that's step two. Let's just take a look at how that gets used by our web server, our local web server, the React one, that's the main web page. It's pretty simple. I've taken the certificate and the key that were generated. Again, the article has the step-by-step. -step. And I've added them to my project along with some environment variables to tell Create React App where the files are. And it takes care of all the details. As it turns out, the other server, the little API server, is not quite as smart. It's just using plain old Express. So I can point to the certificate, but I'm also going to have to open up. I'm also going to have to modify the code a little bit. And you can see here that I'm adding a course policy so that the cross origin call from a web page hosted on port 3000 can access the service on port 5000. And then I'm also going to have to turn on HTTPS using this code that reads the certificates and then uses them to create the web server. It's not a huge deal. You can steal my code right off the screen, uh, but those are the setup steps to get that trusted HTTPS connection. So the remaining steps are the same as they would be for any Azure AD SSO project. So you can follow whatever tutorial you want you're just going to use the local address instead of the ngrok address. So this is the next step then is to use the local host name and port in your app registration. So here is the app registration. You'll see here is devappsforteams.local colon 3000. Doesn't have any trouble with the colon 3000. Here it is in the exposed API. And um, you can also see it in the redirect URL. The final step is to set up the Teams app manifest. Again, we're just going to use the local host name and port instead of an ngrok host name. So uh, you can see it here. You can also see it if we go into the tab itself, the URL of our personal tab. You'll see that it's also using devapps for teams colon uh, dot local colon 3000. And then in the domains and permissions section, if we go over there, uh, you'll see that, yep, it's actually those same local host names that are, that are set up there. So let's test it out. I'll go ahead and install this for myself. And if you see the picture, that means that it's authenticated with Azure AD SSO and pulled my picture from the Microsoft graph. And it worked. Ta -da. For more on this topic, please check out the video, What is NGROC and Do I Really Need It for Teams Development? That's at aka.ms slash NGROC dash video. And there are also a couple of articles. aka.ms slash NGROC dash article has the general NGROC article that matches the other video. And then for the step by step that shows how to set up this article, including generating those trusted. HTTPS certificates, you can go to aka.ms slash tabs dash without dash ngrok dash article. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more Microsoft 365 developer videos.